Praise you God. are way maker, the miracle word, the worker, word. promise keeper, the light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He never stops working. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In fact, I think a lot of times when it seems like he's doing the least is when he's doing the most. The enemy tries to get us focused on the things that are going on around us instead of on what's going on in us. Praise the Lord. He never stops. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here this morning. And uh, all of you that are joining us on uh, Facebook and live stream, we, we appreciate you being with us and being a part of the service today and part of the, the family of God. Hallelujah. God's working everywhere in every place, through everybody who, who will believe. Amen. Hallelujah. It's an exciting time to be living in. As crazy and chaotic as it is, it's also there's something stirring in all of us knowing that God is moving. Yes. Amen. And we're going to see the hand of God just yes. slap the devil yes. silly. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give him a hand for that. I think he will. Amen. We're coming for you. Hallelujah. That's what we need to be shouting. We're coming for you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Praise the Lord. I said Wednesday night I, would go, I was going to say covenant. I'm not really, I guess I'm, we're always preaching covenant whether we realize it or not, but that really isn't my message. But I got kind of stirred up Wednesday night, and so I said I would, and I am. Covenant. Praise the Lord. And I'm just going to simply say, this is the simplest definition. By no means does it cover everything that we could get into. Uh, for those of you especially that have been on Wednesday night Bible studies, it's just been mind-blowing. But uh, covenant is a binding and solemn agreement to do or keep from doing specific things, a compact, to join firmly together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. And isn't that really what has happened when we get born again? We become one yes. with the Lord. Amen? And that's, that's the evidence of the covenant, the fact that we are one. Amen? And uh, we're never going to be alone. We're never going to be on our own again. Amen. We'll always have the Lord with us, in us, and working through us. Right. Praise the Lord. And that's what I want to talk to you uh, about this morning. And, a, and obviously, a, my usual roundabout uh, dysfunctional way. Praise the Lord. But the Lord spoke this to me. I heard somebody say this, but it, the Lord really said this to me the other day. And that is, he wants to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. If you've gotten comfortable in the Lord, he's wanting to get you uncomfortable. And if you're uncomfortable, if you're freaking and fr afraid, well, he wants to comfort you. He wants to keep us all focused on what he's doing in this last day. Because these are the last days, however long these last days are. I'm not setting dates or anything else. Could be 20 years, could be tomorrow. But we're definitely in the times that God is moving as he has never moved before. And here's the, here's the deal. He's going to do it through you. We're not going to just see God show up and manifest himself. That's not going to happen until the work is over. Right. Amen? Until after we have accomplished what he's called us here to do. Amen? Right. This isn't about just going to heaven. We're going to heaven. That's already a settled deal. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, your, your ticket's already punched. You're as, good, as far as he's concerned, you're already there. But this is about occupying here, about taking the authority over the enemy here and now. And that's where the church has to be united. We have to be one. Because we know, obviously, everything around us is divided. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants division. Because wherever there's division, there's strife, there's envy, there's every evil work. Yep. And God knows we're seeing plenty of the evil work. But the glory of God is going to shine brighter. 
Amen. We're going to slap the devil silly before this is all over. He's going to wish he'd never started messing with this country. Praise God. This is a nation still, amen, under God, indivisible, amen, and trusting in the Lord. Amen. He is our God. Amen. We are under God in this nation. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And the, the devil, what the devil meant for evil is going to come right back in his lap. The traps and the snares that he's setting are coming back to him. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So let me just begin with Genesis, uh, excuse me, with Jeremiah chapter 29, and we'll read verses 11 through 13. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, I, I couldn't be more excited to be living in these days. Amen. As, as spooky and weird as it has been over the last year or so, there's also been a rising up of the Spirit in people and throughout this nation. And what we're seeing, the evil, believe me, there are far more good. It's, it is what Tim was saying. Elijah said to his servant, open their eyes that we might see that those that are with us are more than those that are against us. Praise God. Amen. So in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you will ask me, you will seek me, and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. God's wanting all of us, all of me, all of you, all of us. When we seek him, we'll find him. Yes. When we search for him with all of our heart. Praise God. God's desire for his children is expressed in the fact that the Lord searches the whole earth looking for somebody, looking for anybody, looking for everybody, praise the Lord, for people who will give themselves completely to him the way a, a child does to their father. Yes. Amen. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. Praise God. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. He's not talking about perfect people. He's talking about people with a heart that is hungry for God. People that have a, let's say it this way, for people who are focused on the Lord, a pure heart. In other words, not, not mixed, not, not defiled, not uh, polluted, not diluted, but fixed on the Lord. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart. Those people are the ones that are going to see God. I believe we're going to see the Lord. Now, I'm not talking about a physical presence of a body, but I'm talking about we're going to see the Lord in the manifestations and the moving of God by His Spirit in these days like we've never seen before. These are the days, amen, that He created us for. Yep. Amen. We're not, we're not just randomly cast out into the earth to live any old time. He chose the day that we were to be born. He chose the time in which we would live because he had a purpose for us. And I'm telling you, we ought to be excited. We ought to be proud in the sense that God has chosen us for a time like, like this. In other words, he has put his confidence in us to accomplish what has to be accomplished in this last day. Therefore, he will equip us to do that very thing. Praise the Lord. Matthew 5 and 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. So these scriptures that we're talking about here uh, in the beginning of this uh, service this morning tell us our perception of God is going to be clear. It's not going to be the hazy, focused, uh, uh, kind of biopic or whatever it might be. But we're going to have a pure vision of God. We're going to have a clear and definite communication with Him. Amen. That's going to be far easier than anything we've experienced in the past. And the reason is we may think that, well, it's just God. No, it's the pure heart. It's the focus, amen, that the enemy has brought. Now, he thought he was coming to scatter, and all he did was unite us. All he did was to cause us to focus on God, and we're going to see God and hear God in ways that we never have before and more clearly than we ever have in the past. Praise the Lord. He's raising up prophets. Suzanne is an example, amen. She's been involved in the church for years and years, and and has been outspoken in many ways. But God has, has, has taken this time to say, now I'm going to put people in offices, amen, where they will function just as I declared they will. In other words, these are weapons. These are the weapons of God. And every one of you are one. Whatever he has called you to, you will fulfill that office. You will fulfill that calling in this last day. 
Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Don't let him tell you what your past has been. You tell him what his future is. Praise the Lord. Amen. A hearing ear and a whole heart are necessary for God's children to hear their father speak. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He's equipped us. Praise God. So we've got men and women in the government today. And not just in the federal government, it's in the local government. It's, it's in our schools. It's in our school boards. I'm not saying everybody is, but I'm saying there's a representative there of the enemy in almost every place we look where there's leadership, where there is what is, has been referred to as authority. Amen. We're talking about abortion. Blood worship, blood sacrifices being given. It's, this isn't just killing innocent children. This isn't just... Uh, butchering the unborn, this is offering sacrifices to a devil. Whether they have sense enough to know it or not is irrelevant. The fact remains that's what's happening. He's manipulating them and using them. And God, I'm telling you, is fed up to here with it, and he's going to put an end to it one way or another. The blood of the innocent cries out to God, and he responds. When it was just Cain and Abel, he said, your brother's blood cries to me. How, how much crying do you suppose there is with the millions of innocents that have been butchered, amen, by this nation, by this government who wants to perpetuate it and actually wants to increase it? Sexual perversion. Read Romans sometime. You'll find out where God stands on this. We don't hate anybody. We love everybody because God loves them. But the sin is still the sin, and we're not going to tolerate it. We're not going to abide by it. We're not going to embrace it. And we're not certainly not going to let it be taught to our children. Yes. person has a confused uh, reality as to their sexuality. Get some help. God will straighten you out in a hurry. It isn't that complicated. Look in the mirror. This happens, this has happened from the very beginning of time. The enemy comes for the children. Yep. If he can't kill them, he'll come to destroy their minds. He'll come to take them captive. Yes. Yeah. True. Bless God, he's not taking this generation. No. We're, we're putting our foot on the ground right now on the devil's yes. neck, and we're saying, no more, that's enough. Yes. No more. That's right. That is right. We're not against people. God help the people that are promoting this crap. They need to be born again. They need to come to Jesus. But if they won't, then they need to be cast into utter darkness. They need to be moved out of the way so that God can do what only God can do. If we're going to be overcomers, church, we better be operating in our covenant with God. Because I guarantee you the other side is in covenant with the enemy. If you, don't, if you haven't figured that out yet, you better get it figured out. They have, in league with the devil, they have made a pact with him. They have made a covenant with him to promote his will, his purposes. So we better be in covenant. Because that's what God is calling us to. That's what the awakening and the revival is all about. Look at Psalms 149, verse 5 through 9. I said last week, and I'll just remind you, and I hope you are, you need to be praying every day for this nation. You need to be praying for the deceivers, the liars, the demonic influence, the godless to be moved out of the way, to be exposed and to be moved out. Ron Bryant gave us a prophecy over a year ago about the exposing and the revealing. We had no idea what it was. It was before COVID ever even come on the scene. But that was a word from God, folks. And we can look back now and say, thank God that he was speaking to us even then. Even though we may not have understood it, it's telling us he was aware and he was equipping us even then for what was coming. Yeah, Psalms 149, verse 5 through 9. So God is speaking to us. He spoke to Ron. And he'll speak to you. And we need to share the words that God... 
that God gives to us. We may not be 100% accurate all the time, but I'm willing to risk a, a mistake every once in a while. I've made plenty of them, and I'm still standing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, t- I said something last night. Uh, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? So for some of us that are, you know, chronologically aging a little bit, just, just think about that a little bit. How old would you be if, if you didn't know how old you was? I guarantee you most of us would be younger. And that's what God is saying. You've got plenty ahead of you. There's plenty more that f- to be done that God wants to use you to do. And that's true of whatever age you are, whether you're very young or whether you're very old. There's no old with God. He's always I am. Praise the Lord. So let the saints be joyful. He's talking to us. Let them sing aloud upon their bed. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all saints. Praise ye the Lord. This is the honor that God has given us to execute judgment. Amen. To take the war to the enemy. To quit standing in defense, to quit hovering, you know, in the bunkers, but come out and wage the battle. I mean, take it to him the way David did to Goliath. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. John 1, 11 to 13. John 1, 11 through 13. And I'm going to, this is very simple what I'm talking about this morning. It's not deep and mysterious in the sense, but, but yet it's something we need to be reminded of because the Holy Ghost is trying to get free. The Holy Ghost is trying to get be loosed, amen, into these situations and circumstances. And the only way that can happen is through you. Yes. Praise the Lord. So he came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now what I'm going to say to you this morning is not about salvation. If you have believed in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you have confessed Him with your mouth that He is your Savior, that God raised Him from the dead, you're born again, you're going to heaven. But this isn't just about going to heaven, we're still here. Heaven will take care of itself. What we need to do is take care of this. And that means we got to have more than just a ticket punch to heaven. And that's really what God is trying to get across to us. So I'm not trying to scare people into thinking you're not going to go to heaven if you're not doing this. I'm just trying to get you encouraged to, that there's more than going to heaven. Otherwise, He'd have just taken us to heaven when we believed. Amen. So let me, let me uh, repeat this again, if you will, Suzanne, back to 9, or excuse me, 11. He came unto His own, His own received Him not. But... As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So John is describing this mysterious, this invisible birth. You could say a mystic birth. (laughs) Mystic simply means beyond human comprehension. Oh, wonderful. Oh, awesome. Amen. And so now this, this, is, this is radical from the natural, from the perspective. And that's why the people that we're against, they mock us. They laugh at us. That's okay. They mock the prophets. They laughed at Jesus. Yeah. Amen. But they won't be laughing long. No. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. This is radical because there's, there's many people in the world who are God's creatures, but not God's children. We need, to get, we need to be aware of this. Yeah. Not everybody on this planet is a child of God. Right. We're all creatures created by God, but some of us are new creatures, new creations. Amen. Others are just creatures still. Yeah. I'm not demeaning, demeaning their value as human beings and that God created them, and He created them for a purpose. The purpose was for them to become sons of God. Now, they can choose to remain a creature if they want, But they're not a child of God until they become a child of God. Amen. So to understand what I'm talking about, see, there there are creatures and children. Everybody is born into this world a creature. Born of God, but a creature in this creation. 
And so to understand what I'm talking about, we've got to believe in the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. Praise the Lord. We, there's, there's, only one, there's only one race anyhow. The human race. But even more specific, within the body of Christ, there's only one race. It's the God race. Yes. And we're, we've, we're letting people bicker and fight and get us into division with people that are brothers. There are as much a brother. They've got the same DNA, the same God blood, the same God birth as I have. Yes. Yes. Well, whoever they are, I don't care. It doesn't, that's irrelevant. But this is the devil comes to divide us, to try to get us to look at something external and say, that's who that is. That's who this is. Amen. Praise God. You, we might as well get excited, amen, and, and I don't care. I'm, I'm aggravated. I'm mad. I'm not, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm, my voice is a little loud because I want the devil to not mistake what I'm saying and who I'm saying it to. I, for one, want to know what God has to say. I've heard enough about what the devil wants to repeat. I've heard all of that crap. I don't want to hear it anymore. It can't be misunderstood without realizing the fact that receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior has to be an aggressive act of the total personality. I'm finding it out more and more. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about going to heaven now. I'm talking about receiving what Jesus died to give us, which was far more than just a ticket to heaven. Amen. If you want all that's available to you, you're going to have to aggressively go for it. You're going to have to go after it. Amen. This isn't a passive acceptance. It's not just religious activity. That's not proof of spirituality. Yeah, I, I can take you to some churches that have some really dramatic and uh, powerfully uh, visual, at least, religious activity. But no God. No presence. No power. No anointing. No spirit. So let's look at John 1, 11 through 13 again. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as, he, as received him, to them gave he power. Everybody say power. power. To become the sons of God. Hallelujah. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So notice God tells us about certain people being born. Now, this is a clue. It's a clue because God went out of his way to talk about these certain people being born. And we know that God never does anything without a purpose. Without, you know, he doesn't do things routinely. So everything he does is alive. Everything he does has meaning. Everything he does is uniquely significant. So why would God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and all that there is in it, why would that God take the space in his written word, this holy word that is spirit and life, why would he take the space of that, amen, to talk about people being born? So there's a good deal to consider here. I mean, we look at human birth as an ordinary, normal thing. I can point you to the back row. <laughs> and of course, I'll get... I'll have a response to that at some point, I'm sure, but I'm still dead. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But we look at it as an ordinary, a, a normal thing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many babies born every day. It's no big deal except to the parents. But the only way to get into this world is to be born. Yeah. It's routine. It might seem insignificant to some, especially if you're not in the process of having them anymore. But it's still important to those that are. Right. And it's the only way to get here. Yes. Yes. Amen. So Jesus was one of the most realistic teachers that you're ever going to find. And here in this scripture, he talks about human beings born of the will of the flesh, the biological urge, the will of man. And the word also refers to being born of blood. So we're all, everybody, every human being is born of blood and bones and all the rest. That's the level of life that everyone is born into. 
Amen? And the idea is we are born, and there are bones, and there's blood, there's flesh, there's tissue, there's hair, there's skin. That's all re reality when you get born into this natural world. Is it not? Does it, everybody, some have maybe a little more hair when they're first born into this. Some have very little hair. I was bald, I think, till I was two years old. Amen. But some kids come in with all kinds of hair. But I mean, we all got the same stuff, right? It's part of being born into this world. Right. Flesh, bone, blood, skin, tissue, sinew, hair, all of it, right? Everybody gets that. Right. Yeah. Amen. So there's no big news when somebody's born, when somebody's being born, and yet God takes the effort to inspire the writer to talk about it in his word. Like we didn't know that we all have sinew, that we all have bones, that we all have joints, that we all have hair, that we all have eyes and ears and noses and skin, and right? It's a message that certain people are born. He narrows it down. He tells us about these certain people that are born. And the reason it's significant and not ordinary is that these are born mysteriously. Because it's common. Normal birth is not mysterious. I mean, if you're over a certain age, you know how it happens. Right? It's all, it works. It just happens. It, it does. And everybody knows it. But he takes the time to show us something that everybody's familiar with, everybody understands, it's common. And he tells us this because it's significant, because it's not ordinary. These are born mysteriously. This has nothing to do at all with this common birth that everybody's familiar with, that everybody understands. Because you must be born into the spirit realm as well. Yeah. John 3, verses 3 through 8. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again when he's old? See, he's thinking, I know how people get born. Everybody knows this. How's this going to happen? How am I going to be born when I'm old? How am I going to enter the second time into my mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the flesh is creature. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind blows where it lifts, and you hear the sound of it. But you can't see the wind. You can hear it, you can see the results of it, but you can't see it. You can't tell where it's coming from and where it's going. And so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. He clearly says it's a birth on another level. Not the blood level, not the flesh level, but a mystic level, a mysterious level, a level the natural man doesn't understand. This invisible birth that he's talking about is an act of God. It's something God does, not something we do. The only, I think the only comparable between this mysterious birth and the natural birth is that we have nothing to say about how it happens. Right. We, didn't, we didn't do anything to make it happen other than to believe. Right. In natural birth, we could be seen, we could be touched, we could be weighed, we could be washed, we could be clothed, all of those things. But this birth that he's talking about is invisible. Mm -hmm. It's mysterious. It has nothing to do with the flesh. It's from heaven. It's from an entirely different realm. The birth of the Spirit, simply by the grace of God. Yeah. It's a mysterious birth, and it gives us, because of that, particular privileges. Yes. As many as received him, to them gave he power. 
to become the sons of God, being born into the kingdom of God or into the family of God. This is awesome if you really think about it. God gave us His DNA. God gave us what He is that we might become the same. These are the privileged that we're talking about with rights that do not belong to the preachers, only to the children of God. So a person who's a creature of God becomes a child of God only when they're born by a special privilege or right that is granted by God. What Jesus is, we are. I'm going to say that again. What Jesus is, we are. He said we are joint heirs. That in itself tells you you cannot be a lesser to be a joint. You can't be a joint heir and be less than the firstborn of many brethren. He just came first. I'm a, just think about, I want you to think about that for a minute. There is no difference between you and Jesus. I mean, you're seated with Him in heavenly places. You are in Christ. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. The Holy Spirit. They're the same. What Jesus is, you are. We are. In all rights, in all privileges, in all inheritance, in standing with God, equal to Him and like Him. Oh, if that don't make you realize that you've got something that you're not taking advantage of, you're, you need to be woke up. Praise the Lord. Why don't we believe this? If we did, we'd act like it. And maybe we haven't believed it because we've never been in a position that we're in today where we had to believe it. We've been able to just kind of make it through, you know, on our own to some degree and with God's blessing through working hard, through sacrificing, through doing this and doing the other and living in God help us in a great nation that had made things possible for us that wouldn't be possible had we been born somewhere else. Look at Mark chapter 16, 17 and 18, uh, verses 17 and 18. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. I'm telling you, God will not leave me alone about this. He's t- I, I'm, not, I'm not going to be satisfied until I'm operating in these privileges and in this inheritance and in all that God has given me because he paid a price for this to make it possible for me to have access to it. And if I don't take access, then I'm basically just blowing off what he did for me. And these signs will follow them that believe. Or you could say, these signs will follow them that are mine. That I have empowered to be my children in my name. Right. Well, when you get born into a family, you get a name. You get the name of the family, right? And in my name, he says... They're going to cast out devils. I'm telling the devil, I'm putting him on notice right now. You come messing around here, you're going to get cast out. Because these are people who understand their anointing. They understand their privilege. They understand their inheritance. And bless God, we will not stand the devil to come and try to perpetrate some lie, amen, on the people of God. We'll cast out devils. We'll speak with new tongues. We'll speak with a tongue of angels and God. We can speak directly to God in His language, heavenly language. We'll take up serpents. Did you hear that? We'll take up serpents. We're not running from them. We're taking them up. Get in the way and you're going to get taken up and taken out. If we drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt us. 
We'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Praise God. Take up serpents. Drink any deadly thing. It will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You know, we've been almost frightened to say some of this stuff because we're afraid the devil is going to come and challenge us. And I'm telling you, God is telling us, bring it on. Come and challenge because we have the victory. Praise God. God is on our side. God is in us. I, I got to tell you, it's got to really tick him off. I mean, just think, if, I, if Muhammad Ali, for example, probably one of the greatest fighters that there's ever been, if he had a son and the neighbor came over and treated him like a, like a sissy, just popped him around and smacked him around, you know, and, and, and uh, just abused him, took advantage of him, what do you think Muhammad Ali would do? He would probably, first of all, teach that kid how to fight. Yeah, he would. And fight like, like he was the greatest. Yeah. Amen? And then he would stand there with pride and watch his son kick the living crap out of that kid who had yeah. been bullying him and taking advantage of him. Right. He wouldn't go and abuse the other kid because obviously he's Muhammad Ali. But he'd, treat that, he'd teach his kid, he'd teach his son how to do what he does just as well as I do it, right. so that nobody is going to take advantage of you. Right. That's what God has done for us. Yes. He's given us all the tools. He's given us the ability, amen, to whoop yes. the enemy. Yes. Amen. To not take any lip from him, not to take any sense. We should be as proud, amen. We, don't, we can rope a dope if we want to, but we can stand up and say, we are the greatest and we're not taking your crap any longer. Praise the Lord. We are the greatest because he's the greatest. And he's given us all things. They'll take up serpents. They'll drink any deadly thing. Try to bring something on us. It shall not hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Praise the Lord. Look at John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, my children, the works that I'm doing, you're going to do also. And in fact, you'll do greater works than these because I'm going to go to my Father. Yes. Praise the Lord. Chapter 17, or excuse me, verses 17 and 18, still in John 14. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him. But we know him because he dwells in us. Amen. Dwells with you, he said, but shall be in you. He's in us. Amen. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yes. Romans 15, verses 17 through 19. Romans 15, 17 through 19. Praise the Lord. I have, therefore, whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Gentiles are unbelievers. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. We have not fully preached the gospel of Christ unless we're kicking the devil's butt, unless we're healing the sick, unless we're raising the dead, unless we're doing everything that God has empowered us to do. Yes. That's getting radical. I get it. That's why to receive Jesus as Lord is not passive. Amen. It's not a predigested kind of religion. Praise the Lord. Look at Hebrews chapter 5. 12 through 14. Again, this is not about getting to heaven. This is about Jesus' prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Not me, go. Don't take, not, not me. Take me, Lord. Not, not, it's not about take me, Lord, to heaven. It's about, Lord, send heaven here. Well, the kingdom of heaven is in us. Yes. 
So if the kingdom's coming, it's going to have to be released from us. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. If we eat meat, it's got to be pre-digested, apparently. Because we don't, we're not mature enough yet. So we're still sucking milk when we should be eating steak. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he's a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. I'm telling you, we're living in the time of full age. Praise the Lord. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. This is exactly what Suzanne was talking about earlier. To discern. Exercise, the way, how do you learn to discern? By exercising your senses. Exercising your spiritual senses. True. Yep. Praise the Lord. The mind of Christ. Yes. We have the mind of Christ. Put on the mind of Christ. In other words, think by the Spirit. Yes. Function by the Spirit. Yes. Galatians chapter 4 one through seven. You know, we some of us that come up, up through Pentecost. I I didn't grow up in Pentecostal churches. I grew up in a very nominal, uh, non well, it was a denominational church. It was a Christian a Disciples of Christ church that didn't preach any kind of gifts of the Spirit. Didn't even preach a real salvation message as such. It was just basically be good and do good. Praise the Lord. But those of us that eventually ended up in the Pentecostal circles got to where it was almost entertainment. More than it was a challenge to actually participate. And that's what God has shaken us loose from today. It's no longer about watching so-and-so shout or listening to somebody else you know, sing a song. And there's nothing wrong with those things. I'm saying we need to realize that when that person's shouting... They're trying to draw people to God. Yes. This isn't about the person shouting. It's about the unction. Yes. And when somebody stands up and prophesies, it's not Mike. It's the Spirit of the Lord. Right. right? When somebody shares, when Suzanne gets up and prophesies or prays, it's not Suzanne. Right. It's a warrior princess, praise the Lord. I'm telling you, when I prayed for her, that was the Lord. I, wasn't, I didn't have anything planned. I didn't even know I was going to be praying for anybody. Right. Anything I said, that came directly from the Lord because I didn't even know what I'd said afterwards. Right. And that goes for everybody in here. You know I don't do that. That isn't what I have done in the past and the reason I haven't done it, and you know because we've talked about it plenty. Because you need to. Right. Tammy mentioned something to me last night at a dinner that my daughter and, and a and a granddaughter were put on, that, that what God was doing, we have missed the fact that shepherds don't beget sheep. They teach the sheep. They help to keep the sheep they, from harm and from, from danger, but they don't have sheep. Sheep have sheep. You have to produce... Now, in a sense, I'm a sheep. I, it isn't like I can just say, well, I'm not going to witness. I'm not going to try to reach anybody for Jesus. Or I'm not gonna, but but I, that's not, my job is to equip you so that you can, right? It's my job to tell you how to do it so you can have sheep. Yeah. <laughs> so that sounds almost <laughs> blasphemous, doesn't it? Praise the Lord. You know what I mean. Hallelujah. We're talking about the spirit here. Yes. So that's, the, that's my position. That's my right. That's my job, right. right? That's the office. Right. Praise the Lord. So now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Yeah. How, does that not describe us? I know it has me. Yeah. I'm an heir. I'm a joint heir with yes. Jesus, yes. an equal heir with Christ, yes. but a child, yes. immature. Don't have it together yet. Even though I don't differ from him, I don't differ from a servant either because I don't know what I have. 
I don't understand what is available. Though I am Lord of all. Though I have authority over all of it, I'm still submitting and subjecting myself to authority that has no right to authority over me. I'm under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. That's the enemy. That's the governments. That's the, the manipulating. I, I'll just tell you, my, uh, my son, stepson actually, but son, has been for 40-some years, so it's not much difference if you know what I'm saying. They've had a business for years. A good business and, and a money-making business. They've been very, very successful. And they, they do a lot of excavating and digging basements for not just for houses but for commercial stuff and so forth. And very, very successful. And they, over the years, purchased some land and put up uh, machine buildings and to, to, to keep their equipment because they've got heavy equipment that they use, obviously. And now, after 20-some years, the county comes in and says, you can't have this. You, 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 you're taking up too much space for the business where there should be housing. I said, he, he was talking to me last night, I said, well, didn't you just say, hey, isn't this grandfathered in? I mean, come on, we've been here for all this time. Nobody ever said anything before. It was our property to begin with. He said, no, too much residential now. You've got to cut it back. So he's got to eliminate part of his structures that house the equipment and the machinery and so on and so forth and move it to someplace else. See, the government is all about, let, let me take care of you so that if I'm taking care of you, I can stop whenever I want to. If I'm the one providing, I can stop providing. I can take it back. Government is not our friend. I'm not talking about rebellion, you know, and, and overthrowing this government. I'm saying we need, to res- we need to limit government. That's what our founding fathers were all about. That's why they said the government should be of the people, for the people, by the people, not by some big group, amen, who dictates to everybody else what it's going to be, and then we have to, you know, couch out of them. Bull, that always bothers me. They got my money. They don't have any money. They have nothing if they don't take it from me. And yet they sit there and point their finger at me and talk to me like I'm some third-rate, no-count what? I'm the guy that keeps you. I'm the guy that's paying your 200 grand a year or whatever it is you're making, along with all the greed and graft and all the rest of it you're getting, making it possible for you to have that. And then you stand there and look down your knows at me and tell me what I got to do and how I got to do it? No. Not anymore. This is, st- this is going to end. It is. The government is on his shoulders and it will be there forever. That's how it's supposed to be. I understand government, ha- there has to be controls, but not when it comes to dominating and r- just overbearingly forcing people to do things that are totally against their faith, totally against their God, and they'll support some heathen God. They'll, they'll lift that up and, cause, and tell us we got to respect that, but they don't have to respect me. No, that ain't working anymore. That ain't happening anymore. You want respect? I'm more than happy to give you respect. But bless God, you're going to give it to me too or you're not getting any. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage to the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because we're sons, God sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Praise the Lord. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant. Or you could say, you're no longer a creature, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If the creatures want government, let them have it. But my king sits on a throne that is above every government. Hallelujah. He has authority over all of them. Your yeas and nays mean absolutely nothing to him. 
So unless you're going to comply with him, I'm going to say no. I said it a week ago. And there'll, there'll be repercussions for all of us if we do what we're supposed to do. But God is still for us. And as long as they don't contradict the word of God, I'll go along. But when they do contradict the word of God, I'm saying no more. I'm not doing it. And if enough of us do it, it'll stop. Hallelujah. Jesus' birth was not common birth. He was God. And he stooped down to mortal flesh. But by being born of flesh, he gave us a spiritual birth. He elevated us to the heavenlies because he was willing to come to the earthly. Jesus suffered on earth. His suffering was uncommon because it was infinitely above the level of the common. Infinitely above the creature. Praise the Lord. If we're his sons now in faith, he has raised us all above the level of common. Yes. Above the creature level. Yes. So we see ourselves as children of God. Then we no longer do the common things. Right. It's the elevation of things by his suffering. By his lowering, we've been lifted. We've been elevated. We're on another level. Praise God. Ephesians 2, verse 6. It's time, church, for some holy boldness. It's time to look the devil in the eye and say, you are defeated. Amen. Whatever that devil's wearing. I don't care if he's wearing a senator's suit or dress or a congressman, or a president, a school board, city council, mayor. If they're going to respect me and my faith, then I'll respect them. If you're not respecting me, don't expect me to pat you on the back and give you a raise and vote you back into office again next year so you can continue to do the demonic crap you've been doing. Even if you're not aware of what it is you're doing. Ignorance is not an excuse hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, or God works is the literal translation, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Yes. Praise the Lord. Don't get the wrong idea. I love this country. I do. I, I, I fought for it. I went in the service. I, I did. I, I paid my taxes. I've done the stuff. I haven't always been the greatest citizen. But I, I love this country and I appreciate what it stands for. Yes. And because of that, I have a right when they're doing right. what they should not be doing. When they're, when they're going away from the things that this thousands and thousands, millions of men and women have given their lives for. Right. And then spit in their face. And no, I, that, that's time to just say that's enough. Right. We're, we're not going to put up with it anymore. Right. Too many people have paid the ultimate price for this nation for us to just sit back and watch it just be ripped away from us. Right. As if we had nothing to say about it. Right. It's a dishonor to everyone from the founding fathers and anyone who has stood for this nation in the past or who might ever do it in the future. I'm not bragging on myself. I'm no war hero. I'm just saying, anybody that signs that paper and takes that oath puts themselves in a position where they could be paying the ultimate price. And God knows plenty of them have. They are the heroes. The ones that are laying in the cemeteries. Praise the Lord. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. His dying wasn't common. It wasn't a debt to nature. It wasn't just old age finally caught up with him. His dying was not even a murder. 
It was uncommon. It was dying of the just for the unjust. It was sacrificial. It was an exchange. His God life for our flesh life. Hallelujah. Our creature for his sonship. Being uncommon in his birth, in his life, in his death, leads us to believe that his words would be uncommon as well. That's why his words will never be understood by God's creatures, only by his children. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 9 through 16. Praise God. 1 Kings 17, 9 through 16. This, we all know this story. We've heard, read it many times. But arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. This is the prophet being told. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he rose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and he said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Now, as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. And bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and her house did eat many days. Amen. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruse of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The word of God to us is like the barrel of meal. It didn't waste. It didn't run out. And the cruise of oil, that didn't fail. But it yielded treasure. Praise God. No matter how great the need, there's always more than enough. Verse 14, he says, this is going to happen. Until I reign everywhere. Yeah. He's going to supply everything we need. Yeah. Until that Holy Spirit is poured out entirely over this earth. Until the waters cover the earth. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you what the Lord has spoken to me was that Pentecost is perpetual. Amen. God is saying, give me what you've got. Hallelujah. We, had, we were talking Wednesday night afterwards. This isn't about me, I'm just saying. He told me, give me what you got, Nathan. I said, right, what I got? He said, you. And I'll let that spirit live. But I need, I need something from you, and that's the flesh. That's the fear. That's the concerns. That's the, the limitations. And I'll give you something eternal. It'll manifest in ways that you've yet to experience it. So I believe in a perpetual Pentecost. And God's saying, give me what you've got. Give me what's external and abiding. Something given. And what came to pass was eternal. It was heavenly. It was permanent. It was lasting. It was supernatural. And that's what God is saying to every one of us. Yes. Give me what you've got, and I'll give you what you cannot get. Yes. David said, if sacrifice doesn't cost me something, it's not worth giving. But God's not, we're not earning anything from him. But he's saying, if you'll give me what you got, I'll give you what I got. You get your flesh out of the way. 
and my spirit will dominate. You are, you've got it, but you still got to get this out of the way in order for it to rule, for it to have its way. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Praise God. That's why I'm excited. I'm hearing God more than I ever have. And maybe it's simply because there is a little bit less of the flesh. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, bragging by, by any means, because believe me, there's still plenty there. I'm just saying I've made a decision that there'll be less that I'll do what I can to cooperate with you, Lord, so that your spirit can dominate, so that you can have authority, so that you can rule from your temple. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Power comes with this new birth. Yes. It's part of it. Yes. In fact, it's the reason for it. Be endued with power from on high. Power. What is power? Power is simply the ability to do. Yes. It's the guy with the ability to do that wins. Yes. That's us. The ability to do what you're given to do. Take up serpents. Cast out demons. Yeah. Raise the sick or raise the dead. Heal the sick. Yeah. He abides in us to make Jesus real. To make us able to do the works of God. The good works. We live in a critical time, obviously. And we have to have manifestations of the Spirit that's in us to be victorious. The numbers against us are huge. But the power that's in us is greater. But we can't do this as long as God's children refuse to acknowledge what we have and who we are. We have not taken advantage of our inheritance or our heritage. It's to be in us what we can never be ourselves. We are not God's creatures. We are God's children. God has promised us a seizure an invasion that came from beyond us to us that now must come from us. Yeah. If we're going to reproduce Christ on earth, we've got to operate by the Spirit. Yeah. If we're going to be children of God, we've got to live by the Spirit of God breathing through us. Yeah. To live above the creature. Romans eight nineteen through 22. I'm about finished here. Romans eight nineteen through 22. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. See, there's a hunger in the creature. They don't know what it's for, but it's a hope of something beyond what they have. The expectation, this earnest expectation, or this hunger, this desire, this longing of the creature is waiting. For what? For us. For the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity or to his own abilities. Not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Praise God. Chapter, or excuse me, verse 28 through 32. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, his children. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Yes. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Jesus, I mean, Jesus was glorified. He, he's, keep, he's even given us that same level. Yeah. What shall we then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? What do we have to be afraid of? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How will he not with him also freely give us all things? Yes. Glory to God. Here is the good news. Emmanuel. 
God with us. Yes. Amen. Deity is present. Yes. Pentecost. It came at Pentecost. Amen. The deity came to mankind to give himself to man. The wind, the same breath that was breathed into Adam in creation was blown into man on the day of Pentecost. Made available to us. The breath of heaven. So that man might breathe God in as he breathes air. In order to be born again. Ephesians 3.19 Every time, think about it, every time you breathe in and every time you breathe out, God is respirating. Yes. Amen. He's breathing on earth. Praise the Lord. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Being filled with the fullness. And of course, I, I get it. We, ca we can't contain all of God because God contains us. But we can have all of God that we can contain. And we can enlarge our vessel by faith and by the Word of God. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst. They'll be filled. Yeah. Hallelujah. This mysterious, invisible birth manifesting the Word of God to us and for us and now through us. Isaiah 59, 21, last scripture, we'll wrap with this. Isaiah 59, verse 21. Prophetic word from the prophet. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Yes. That tells me we are more than con We're not getting whipped. We're going to win. We're going to win. It's just a question of who's going to stand up and use the word of God as a sword and defeat the enemy. Because his gifts and his callings are without repentance. He doesn't change his mind. Whatever he has said, it will come to pass. Yes. Whether it was personal in your life or whether it was uh, you know, uh, corporate through the word of God. He's going to do what he said he did. He's going to do what he said he was going to do. And it will come to pass. And how's he going to do it? You. Through the mystic birth. Through this mysterious, supernatural, born again experience. Hallelujah. That's just as normal to us mm -hmm. as common birth is yeah. to the natural man, to the creature. But we have been raised and elevated above the creature to a heavenly place where only the sons of God reign and rule over every creature, every living thing yeah. that walks, crawls, creeps, sneaks, mm -hmm. slithers mm -hmm. on the face of the earth. Everybody say amen. amen and praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to get some Holy Ghost boldness and we need to start declaring. You need to be praying for this nation, for the things that God has, has declared to be the truth and the reality here. And we'll watch the enemy. All we're going to see of him is his taillights. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus' name. God, deliver us from fear. Give us boldness to declare your word and your truth in Jesus' name. Suzanne's going to come now and minister. Praise the Lord. Come on, Suzanne. God bless all of you.